Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to replace the transfer case and coder motor on your Chevrolet Silverado and Tahoe or your GMC Yukon and Sierra. First thing I want to do before we get started is talk safety. This is your catalytic converter. It gets very hot in a very short amount of time. We have to remove the uh, front drive shaft here and it's right next to this uh, converter. Again, this is really extremely hot. I didn't drive it far, just from right outside back, and I'm still not gonna touch it. If you barely touch it, it's gonna burn you. So make sure that's cooled down before you start doing this job. I don't want you to get hurt, but like I said, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove this drive shaft. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so we have four 11 millimeter bolts that hold this on in the front. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those four 11 millimeters. Ooh. I left my uh, tool at home or at the other business. Um, so all I got is this little chrome swivel, which isn't the best thing in the world for this, but let's go ahead and remove it anyway. Oh, another thing before you get started, uh, go ahead and mark this. You can mark it with a, a punch or some whiteout or something just so that when you reinstall it, you put it back in, in the correct uh, position. Uh, you know, it is uh, balanced, so you don't wanna have a vibration. So just go ahead and mark it before you take it out. I don't know why I took the camera off to, to twist the head, but I did regardless. All right. <laughs> Next, let's go ahead and remove this plate, the shield for the transfer case. It's got four 15s that hold it on. All right, so here's our dry shaft side. Uh, where it actually goes into the transfer case. Most of the time there's a little lock here that you have to remove. This transfer case has been replaced before so nobody's actually taken the lock off or somebody's already actually taken the lock off and not put another one on there. Uh, I've seen this a thousand times where people don't put a lock on. It's up to you if you want to. I've never had a problem with somebody that came in here and said their transfer case failed because there was no nothing locked there. So again, that's up to you. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove the dry shaft. We're gonna take it in the front and lower it down. Pop this out with a pry bar in the front. Once it's out in the front, all we're gonna do is grab the back, slide it. Again, that transfer case, or excuse me, that converter up front is very hot when you're pulling this, your hand is right next to it. Be very careful. All right, so this is your encoder motor right here. It's held on by three 15 millimeter uh, bolts. You have a connector right here. So we're gonna go ahead, disconnect our connector, push it in the middle, slide it out, just like that. I'm gonna look at the inside of this actually. Make sure it ain't full of corrosion. Corrosion is gonna give you a problem. All right, looks good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take our three 15 millimeters out right there. I hate a chrome swivel. It's gonna knock my teeth out before it's over with. All right, now that we got it loose, all we're gonna do is grab it and slide it backwards. It'll slide right off. There's a little gasket plate behind it. It likes to fall off after you got the encoder motor out, but this is your encoder motor uh, or transfer case where it connects right here. All right, so on this encoder motor, I hope you can see it. It has splines right here. It can only go on one way. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to adjust the splines 
on the transfer case to, a, to meet with these without adjusting this. You want it to be in the neutral position. Um, so like I said, just adjust the top here to meet this. You can use a pair of pliers or a pair of vice grips. Just be, be easy with it. Um, if you want, you can disassemble this, uh, the old trans or encoder motor and actually use that gear. Um, but I'm just gonna, like I said, use a, a small pair of pliers, grab hold of it and just be gentle with it. All right, and let me tell you, I'm, I'm sorry for the kind of the quality of the video because my other camera holder actually broke when I was installing it, so I'm using a smaller one. If it was a, a different camera holder, I could actually get in there a little closer to show you. But I'm making do with what I got. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our new encoder motor that's already aligned with the plate on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and install it. Sometimes you'll have to make some small adjustments with it on there if it isn't quite aligned all the way correctly. Once it's aligned, I'm going to go ahead and take a bolt, go ahead and start it. It's going to slide off. That's actually all right. All right, I actually went ahead and tightened this thing down. The reason I went ahead and tightened it down was because when I was trying to line it up, it kept wanting to slip off even when I put the bolts in the hole, so I made, wanted to make sure that I could hold it, and I couldn't do it with the camera and holding the thing, so I just went ahead and did it. But it's tight, uh, like I said, just those three bolts hold it on. The, uh, the, and just so you know, the gear, uh, I took it back loose just to make sure, the gear needs to be where the, uh, the bottom of the V needs to be straight up and down right here when you go to put it on. Now, you got your connector. One thing you wanna know about the connector is if you leave it loose, the connector, the brackets all the way up here at the top, if you leave it loose, what'll happen is it'll hang down here onto the drive shaft, cause a problem. So make sure you put this back into the, uh, the harness where it goes up at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this up. Make sure to give it a good pull to make sure that it is connected because it will slip apart. It's kind of a weird connector. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in a spot here. So like I said, it don't fall down and just like that. I gotta stop saying just like that in my last video. I think I said it a hundred times. If you want a drinking game and you want to get smashed, go look at that video. And just drink Pepsi every time I say uh, just like that because it gets really obnoxious. All right, once we got that in, like I said, if you mark your dry shaft, we're going to go ahead and slide it across. Slide it in. All the way in. Put it in on the front. I know you can't see what I'm doing up here, but all I'm doing is lining it up the way I took it out. All right. I'm going to go ahead and install my brackets right here in the front. Both in and get them started all the way. Little bit of an oil leak going on here. Have to tell them about that. 
Got something else we can fix later. Just this self out right in the middle of my video. Let's go ahead and install the transfer case shield. This is probably going to be a terrible video with this. Uh, With this little camera holder that I got. And I live in the sticks, so it ain't like I can drive to Walmart or Best Buy. It'd take me an hour to get to either one of those. If you live in the city, it must be nice. And you're done. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And as always, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Now I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna ask you to like my video or subscribe to my channel. I'm the kind of guy that's gonna beg you to do it. Click one of these other videos. Subscribe to my channel. It's on one of these sides. Do them both. Do them all, please.